everybody, welcome to the Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And it's time for another countdown video. Alright, it has been a while since I've done one of these. I think people are about ready for me to move on to my next discography review already at this point. And I went on and off on whether or not I wanted to make a video discussing BT soundtrack work as like an odds and ends thing. But I kind of decided that I didn't really have enough to say for most of it. If you want a quick summary, my favorite soundtrack from him is his score for the first Fast and the Furious. That score is amazing. The score, not the soundtrack with the mediocre rap songs. And his score to Monster is absolutely stunning as well, but you can't actually legally stream either of those right now as far as I know. So if you want my favorite scores of his that you actually can listen to on Spotify, uh, that would probably be Stealth? and his new one for Itifac, or however you say that. Those are some fun listens for sure, if the latter is a bit on the long side. But I digress. This video instead serves to count down my personal favorite BT songs. Obviously I had a bit more material this time around. Whether or not people actually think the expansion to Top 20 is deserved, I really don't care at this point. But his music has been such a big part of my life that I felt like I could do this. I mean, I get the people who say, uh, oh, he's too commercial, eh. But for me, he's one of the people who's most contributed to my mindset that being commercial doesn't automatically make you bad. And why the hell not make the video longer when he just has a lot of songs that I love and have things to say about? May as well get into it. Disclaimers that this is just my opinion and you can feel free to disagree with it. Popularity doesn't come into account for this list. It's just based on my own personal enjoyment and nostalgia. If your favorite BT track isn't on here, oh well, feel free to make your own list. Also, this list is not final. It may not reflect how I feel in a year or a month or even a week. I don't know. I, I mean, I hear he's even got a new album in the works that may end up coming out later this year, so we'll see how that goes, but this is only effective as of right now, April 2019. Oh yeah, and Electronic Opus versions don't count for obvious reasons, so uh, without any further ado, let's finally get into... The top 20 best BT songs. Number 20. Remember from ESCM. Alright then, we're starting this list out with one of the big highlights from the early days of his career. A bubbly and uplifting 8 minute house tune with airy vocals from Jan Johnston complete with sidetracks into rock music and orchestral music for even more bells and whistles that I've always loved BT's stuff for. While this particular blend of synth settings is incredibly 90s, kind of enigma-ish maybe, I've started to really feel that datedness just adds to its charm for me. It's an excellent single. Reminds me of simpler times. Number 19. The Road to Lost With Yell from ESCM. Oops, two songs from me SCM in a row, oh well. This is one that I discovered pretty recently, actually, since I was used to the US version of this album that replaced this track with Lullaby for Gaia, but talk about tracks that just grew on me super fast. We're talking super smooth and spacey 90s drum and bass here. Fast-paced breakbeats while expansive synth pads and twinkling synth melodies fly all around you. It's absolutely beautiful. And the switch up at the 6 minute mark to go into a more hard hitting mode with a bunch of these squelching acid synths and the way that it links so well into the surrounding tracks, Flaming June and Memories in a Sea of Forgetfulness. I mean, as much as I love Lullaby for Gaia, I kinda had to make room in the album for this little gem. Number 18. Divinity from Ima. <laughs> I'll freely admit that BT's debut album is likely to be underrepresented on this list. As much as I love it and can, in, and can get immersed in its lovely 90s new age progressive house blend, it doesn't have all that much for me in terms of standout tracks, and most of it is being taken up by a monstrous 42 minute DJ mix from Sasha that I don't think I can count for as a song in its own right. But even with that in mind, this track is easily my favorite moment from that album. An absolutely soul-lifting experience this one is, with lots of squirting acid-esque synths covered in reverb and creating a danceable groove next to refreshing... Ref 
next to refreshing guitar licks and house pianos, but especially that progression of piano chords at about the 8 minute mark of this track just gives me life. Amazing finish to this album. Do not miss. Number 17. Running Down the Way Up from Movement and Still Life. Always running. I'm pretty sure this was the first BT song I ever heard, since I was pulled in on the promise of the guest features. And not just the obvious Kirsty Hawkshaw vocal performance, though I love her presence in pretty much any track she appears on, and this happens to be one of my overall favorite tracks she sings on. It's like her own little acoustic guitar number expanded into a big spacey journey. But this track also features co-production from Hybrid, who I was a big fan of a while before I became a BT fan and I found this track looking for obscure tracks with their credits on it thanks to my frustration of how short their back catalog was, and I ended up discovering this super smooth deep cut. While I'd go on to discover so many other BT tracks that I love more, uh, this one will always have a special place in my heart for being the one that started it all for me. If you've always failed to notice this one, make sure you give it a listen. Number 16. Forget Me from These Hopeful Machines. Alright then, let's get into a more recent entrant into this ranking. Well, recent as in nine years ago, but whatever. This is a loud and bombastic pop rock track with walls of crushing guitars and vocals from BT himself. Maybe not the kind of thing you'd expect out of a commercial trance producer, but BT's continual efforts to move out of his comfort zone are one of the things I most like about him. But this not being in his usual wheelhouse isn't why it's on this list. Honestly, the appeal of this track is not complicated. It's just a track that emotions ride high on and that I always feel the urge to listen to at high volume and sing along with. The long chunks of straight field recordings at the end and guest performance from his daughter only add to that experience for me. Amazing track. Number 15. Must Be The Love from A Song Across Wires. A lot of my favorite BT tracks are the kind that just have a ton of side tracks and explore a ton of different sounds. And this is a pretty great example of that. Primarily a subtle, soundtracky piano ballad at first, with marimbas all around it and an emotive vocal performance from Nadia Ali. We get little orchestral sections, more minimal house sections, layers of random instrumental performances in the background, a switch over into some flat but still well-paced modern EDM care of co-producer Artie. And it fits together really well, even the most intense sections aren't so over the top to feel out of place. Oh yeah, and the song's really catchy as well, can't forget that. This must be the love. Stuff like this just goes to show that even in later period, BT out of his prime, arguably, he can still put out quality material that keeps me coming in repeatedly. Number 14. Suddenly, from These Hopeful Machines. What is there to say about a track like Suddenly? As far as album openers go, it doesn't get much more hype-inducing and fitting than this. Showcases for glitchy effects, transitioning into a catchy pop rock tune sung by Christian Burns, one that's pretty damn hard for me to listen to and type about at the same time because I'm too busy singing along to the lyrics. It's an absolutely epic track, and of course BT makes room for a weird Electro House breakdown at the end that hits just as hard if not even more so than the rock parts of the bulk of the track. It does a fantastic job of setting the tone for of these hopeful machines and lets you know you're in for a treat. So much love for this track, maybe it's more surprising to people that it's not even higher given how much I love the album it hails from, but I got a few other picks I personally felt were more deserving, uh, such as... Number 13, Artifacture from Underscore. The weirder and longer a BT track is, the more I'm likely to get into it, and Artifacture is an 18 minute long 9 movement magnum opus, so it should be no surprise that it's on this list. 
So many different blends of BT's usual experimental IDM and ambient styles from expansive warm pads to glitchy effects to stuff influenced by Zen music. It takes 13 minutes for a beat to form at the normal EDM pace. I, before there were beats, but they were more abstract and strange and scuffling. This is not dance music at all here, purely to sit back and enjoy the atmosphere, and I will always enjoy any time BT does stuff like this. Number 12. Every Other Way from These Hopeful Machines. I wish I could run. Yeah, it's no coincidence that pretty much all of BT's longer tracks are getting higher billing, and here we have one of the longest songs on these hopeful machines. Primarily a warm and intimate acoustic guitar and glockenspiel piece with a moody but evocative performance from Jess, with lots of sidetracks to get all glitchy and IDM-y, soaring rock sections, a hard-hitting barrage of effects in the outro, I mean, of course, it's BT, so he's gonna make things ridiculously overcomplicated, and as I think I've made it clear above, I do love that about him. But its complex structure isn't the main reason it's up this high on this list. I just think it's one of the most emotional tracks BT has in his repertoire. It's one that fills me up with warm, fuzzy feelings like few other tracks of his are able to pull off. Besides a bunch that happen to be higher up on the list. Number 11. 13 Angels on My Broken Windowsill from If the Stars Are Eternal, So Are You and I. Now I didn't put it at number 13, though that would have been kind of funny. <laughs> Got another more abstract and ambient heavy cut here, mostly really tranquil and subtle and atmospheric and absolutely immersive and beautiful. Oh yeah, and it's got a big hard-hitting dubstep breakdown at one point. And, uh... One that BT successfully makes fit naturally in the track. You'd think given the overall style of the track like this that such a section would be super out of place, but he builds up to it and makes it work really well in context. This is an absolutely epic track that evokes the vastness of space as you'd want from an album cover like that, and hooks you into the album you're about to listen to right away. Absolutely love this thing. And now that we're halfway through the list, I'll get the honorable mentions out of the way here real quick like I did for the Orbital List. Mad Skills Mike Checa for Movement and Still Life. <laughs> 739 for Myth the Stars Are Eternal. Firewater from ESCM. Dynamic Symmetry from This Binary Universe. Somnambulist Simply Being Loved from Emotional Technology. City Life from A Song Across Wires. STM, not an album single. One point six one eight from this binary universe. The Great Escape from Emotional Technology. Godspeed for movement and still life. Stem the tides from Song Across Wires. Loving You More from Ima. Ferris Wheel from the Monster Soundtrack. Fast and the Furious theme from the Fast and the Furious soundtrack. Bro, 
probably could have kept going with that if I wanted to, but I don't want to make this video too long. <laughs> Anyways, let's get into the top 10 now and switch up the buffer music too, because why not? Number 10. Les Nocturnes de Lumière from These Hopeful Machines. So I think it's been made clear from my love for BT's ambient IDM experimentations like 13 Angels and Artifacture that I've always been drawn to the weirder and more complex side of BT. So how about we take a track like that and apply those same overcomplicated fundamentals to a dance track? That's what Le Nocturne de Lumière sets out to do. A track that revels in its weirdness, never sticking to the point in switching from ambient to dance floor ready at the drop of a hat not settling down to let a single hook or riff develop enough to stick in the head. Maybe you can call this track a mess, but I find its strangeness and lack of adherence to any formula be its main draw for me. It's absolutely glorious in its convolutedness, and it was certainly a much needed change of pace to help break up the more traditional commercial trends and pop rock on these hopeful machines. One of the big highlights from that album. Number 9. Dreaming for movement and still life. No words, no talk, we are going to the first things you hear when you put this song on will be clock ticking and an expansive and dramatic string orchestra. Already from the first couple of seconds, you know you're in for a trip. And then Kirstie Hawkshaw starts singing and delivers one of my all time favorite vocal performances from her period. Which should be saying something given how big an Orbital fan I am. And that's just the beginning. From there, BT takes the track into a propulsive and epic journey that isn't afraid to get strange in parts, but never to the point to feeling like it's going off on a sidetrack. This is a classic track, to say the very least, and I don't think this list would feel complete without it. As Kirsty Hawkshaw says, no words. Number 8. The Internal Locus, from This Binary Universe. Alright then, finally time for something from this album to pop up on this list. So, uh, you know how I was recommending some of BT's soundtrack work in the very beginning of this video? The Internal Locus is such a strange track that to me has always felt like a soundtrack to some family adventure movie. With all its quirky xylophone tones going up against vast orchestrations, it's somehow both epic and large in scale while feeling small and intimate. Oh yeah, and it's also not including the extended intro of calming rain sound effects and evocative piano progressions, and a section near the end which opts for a more glitchy house-ish approach. Overall, this is a simply stunning track and one of the best moments from my favorite BT album. Number 7. Omega from Underscore. And here's another strange dance track that only BT would have thought to make. Omega comes off to me really similar to Les Nocturnes de Lumière in that it kind of drifts from idea to idea. Though I think this track is not only better structured, starting out with all its buzzing electronic ambience and going into a weird, atonal modern dubstep breakdown before leading into a more traditional progressive house groove with plenty of atmosphere, but unlike Le Nocturne de Lumiere, Omega still manages to develop a catchy hook out of the weirdness as well, with a repetitive synth riff that is just an absolute joy. Do 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 Now the track's second half with all the various layers of synth arpeggios admittedly isn't as strong as the way this thing began. If that section were cut down some, this track would probably be even higher up on this list. But that part's still pretty cool too. And whatever, this track is by far the one from Underscore I've listened to the most, because that first half is just so fucking amazing that I gotta come back to it over and over and over. It says a lot how much I love that first half by the fact that this track made it up to number 7 basically mostly from that. So yes, more of this kind of stuff please, BT. Number 6. Satellite for movement and still life. Jesus, satellite is 
I get the feeling Satellite is a very special song to BT. He's gone on to attempt to recapture the magic of this track several times, especially on emotional technology. But back in the days of this album, a straight pop rock ballad was pretty unusual for him. And not only was it a career-defining moment from him, it's also a fantastic ending to Movement and Still Life. With all its warm, fuzzy feelings and BT's own vocal performance, that is likely the most em emotional he sounded on record. And while the lyrics are near incomprehensible, covered in metaphors that likely only mean something to BT himself and no one else, his delivery and production make this a super warm and personal moment for BT that's become more and more impactful every time I hear it. Another definite classic. Number 5. Flaming June from ESCM. Oh yeah, and while we're on the topic of definite classics, uh, let's get to the most obvious pick in the entire bunch. The undisputed classic collaboration between BT and Paul Van Dyke, a trendsetter in old-school 90s trance and arguably the track that really put BT on the map. While it's pretty obvious from listening to the track which producer does which part of the track, the most propulsive and soaring trance sections are probably Van Dyke's, while BT is likely responsible for the main hook as well as the warm piano parts and the switch up into a smooth drum and bass style at the very end. Flaming June is iconic. It's, it's just one of those tracks that just has been canonized as a part of electronic music history. And I gotta say, it's well deserved. It still holds up just as well 20 years later as it did back in the day. Well, okay, I wasn't actually there to see it back in the day. I mean, I think I was two when this track came out. But needless to say, it's a longtime favorite of mine, and a track that I'm sure will be on everyone else's list somewhere as well. Number four Skylarking from A Song Across Wires. I'm aware it is probably total blast for me to put this above Flaming June, but hear me out. As far as straight progressive house and trance goes, this is pretty by the numbers, just following the formula the, this, these genres are already set in stone, but it's basically one of the biggest go-to examples of why these formulas became standard in the first place. Skylarking is a pristine production with beautiful build-ups and euphoric payoffs, with melodies that fittingly make you feel like you're up in the sky, is a track that is just so inhumanly perfect, it, it goes beyond words. There's really not nothing else I have to say about it, so just go listen to it. Number three. The Anti-Kythera Mechanism from This Binary Universe. When it comes to the complicated and abstract side of BT, I believe the Anti-Kythera Mechanism to be the absolute pinnacle. This is a track with so much amazing content over the course of 10 minutes, from its subtle and stripped-backed ambient beginnings growing into its lonely, high-pitched electric piano lines, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo, and warmer acoustic guitar patterns later, but then exploding into full-on epic orchestration, movie trailer-ready stuff, and then it's long showcases of glitchy IDM chopping up all the previous parts and ending in a glitched out version of the most intense orchestral moment. All of these sections building up and paying off in the most satisfying and beautiful way. I love this track so much that I made a track on my own last album, Spiral Out of Control, I was pretty heavily inspired by the weird twists and turns and overall style of this track in particular. I called it Sacred Geometry. It's nowhere near as good as this one, but you, you get what I mean. Because this is just an incredible, life-defining track here. Number 2. The Emergency from These Hopeful Machines. Yeah, it might be a bit of a controversial pick putting this up this high. I'm well aware it's not everyone's cup of tea, but just as Running Down the Way Up first got me interested in BT, The Emergency is the track that converted me into a BT fan for life. From the moment my ears laid on the progressions of piano chords in the beginning, doo doo, doo doo, I was 
was hooked. And it built up into BT and Andrew Bear's smooth trance production with BT yelling out, Yeah, I love you, over and over. I know not exactly the most creative lyrics out there, but uh, his delivery sold it so much that I couldn't help but get into it and sing along with him. And finally, the warm pad of orchestral sounds at the end cemented this track as an all-time favorite. I can understand the people who aren't into it, but this is yet another life-defining moment from BT and most likely the track of his I've listened to the most at this point. But there was still one more track that I felt was more deserving of the top spot. Number 1 Good Morning Kaya from This Binary Universe Yeah, I'm sure some people probably saw this coming a mile away, but I don't think it could have been anything else. This is just an emotional gut punch of a track. Its subtle progression of pianos alongside ocean sound effects in the beginning, building up to its epic post-rock climax, with a somewhat unconventional 10-4 time signature running through most of it, it fulfills the weirdness quota by not sounding quite like any other BT track in that way. But the whole thing being an instrumental love letter to his then baby daughter, and closing out my second favorite album of all time... Yeah. No words for Good Morning Kaya. It makes me tear up almost every time I put it on. Not just my favorite track from BT, but one of my favorite tracks of all time period, and the most fitting choice for the number one spot on this list. So yeah, that's the list. Of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. So leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Uh, next discography review will be Biosphere, because someone paid for that on Patreon. Uh, and speaking of which, shout out to my Patreon supporters. Uh, there are some people if you want to add yourself to that list or make me a review something. Link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.